Hi everyone! At this point, let's discuss about your renal and urinary problems, okay? So, before we proceed to our diseases, let's have first a quite a short review and quick review po sa inyong anatomy and physiology, okay, of our renal and urinary system. Okay, so let's uh, pasadahan lang po natin, no, what are those functions of our kidneys, kapatid, for us to be able to understand kung ano nga ba yung pagkaka or ano yung magiging uh, problem natin when it when we already discuss our um, signs and symptoms and even our interventions okay sa mga sakit na po na meron tayo sa ating urinary and renal system okay so kapatid kapag sinabi natin kidney it has these four major major roles first kapatid is removal of toxins from the blood okay so unang-unang trabaho po ng ating kidney ay yung pagtanggal ng mga toxins mula po sa ating dugo at kapatid, kapag sinabi po natin uh, toxins in the blood, ano nga ba ang toxins po na ito? So, what we're referring to is our urea and our creatinine. Okay? So, again, ulitin po natin our urea nitrogen at ang ating pong creatinine. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin urea nitrogen, when you consume those food, okay, kapag kumain po tayo ng pagkain, lahat po ng kinain natin na mayaman po sa protein, okay, it will be broken down into amino acids okay so it will be broken down into your amino acids and then your liver will will convert it into ammonia and then hanggang it will be broken down into your urea nitrogen kapatid and because we're talking about the blood so this is now what we call as your blood urea nitrogen okay so ngayon alam na natin that ah ito pala yung BUN and that's correct okay so creatinine naman kapatid it's the um is a byproduct of protein metabolism po ng ating muscle sa katawan. Okay? So, these are toxins or these are waste products ng ating blood and si kidney po ang may trabaho no na palabasin sila. So, sa simpleng sabi o sa madaling sabi, kapatid, kapag meron tayong problema, hypothetical, wala pa tayo sa problems. Now, considering hypothetical, may, may kidney problem tayo. So, kapag pala may kidney problem tayo, hindi na ma mailalabas or wala nang mechanism na maglalabas ng toxins from the blood. Hence, ang mangyayari, kapag may kidney problem po, mataas po ang BUN at saka ang creatinine. So, wag na tayong magtaka. Ganun yan, kapatid. Okay? So, first, the function of your kidney is to remove toxins from the blood. Pangalawa, kapatid, it maintains electrolyte balance. Alam natin yan. Okay? When your kidney has a problem, it cannot maintain or cannot perform the maintenance of electrolyte balance ng ating pong uh, katawan. Okay, it actually has a very important role in the homeostasis of our electrolytes. Okay, so pangatlong role niya kapatid, it produces these important things. Unang-una is yung bicarbonate. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin bicarbonate, that's actually base. Tama? Okay, bicarbonate. So, uh, alam na, now you know. Okay, you would be able to understand. Hala, kapag may problem tayo sa kidney, wala nang gagawa ng bicarb. So, wala nang masyadong alkalotic. Okay? So, what will happen to your body kapag meron tayong kidney problem? Magkakaroon tayo ng acidosis or alkalosis. So, the answer would be, magkakaroon ng acidosis kasi wala nang gumagawa ng bicarb. Wala nang mas gumagawa pa ng alkalotic component. So, would it be respiratory or metabolic? It would be metabolic acidosis because it's the kidney. We're referring to the kidney, kapatid. So, ganun lang. It's as easy as that one, kapatid. Another thing is that it also produces your erythropoietin, a very important enzyme, kapatid, in your, um, a very important uh, factor, kapatid, in the production of our red blood cells. That's why, kapatid, kapag may problema din tayo sa kidney, walang nagpo-produce, kapatid, ng erythropoietin, that's why caps nagkakaroon din tayo ng anemia. Okay, kapag may kidney problems tayo. Okay? Another is yung synthetic vitamin D. Ginagawa nyo ran, nya rin ang synthetic vitamin D. O sometimes it's being referred to as the activated vitamin D. Ibig sabihin nito kapatid, it's, um, it's, it's a already a preformed vitamin D. At alam natin that vitamin D is very, very important in the absorption of our calcium in the GI tract. So madaling sabi, kapag walang vitamin, I, I mean kapag may kidney problem, walang masyadong or ma ma tatanggalan tayo okay nang gumagawa ng synthetic vitamin D so ibig sabihin nito kapatid uh, magkakaroon din tayo ng problema so nawala ito 
So nawala po ang ating pong uh, gumagawa ng bicarb. So ang gag ang mangyayari is pagkakaroon ng alkalosis. Nawala rin po ang erythropoietin, magkakaroon ng anemia. Nawala rin po ang ating vitamin D, so magkakaroon din naman tayo ng problema when it comes to our calcium levels. Bakit kapatid? Remember that your vitamin D is responsible for the absorption of your calcium in the GI tract. So dahil wala ng uh, masyadong vitamin D, what will be realizing of course magkakaroon tayo dito kapatid ng hypocalcemia okay so lastly kapatid is nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, another function din ng ating kidney is it that it regulates your water balance through the dardara system yung tinatawag nating renin angiotensin aldosterone system okay so it regulates water balance so ganun na lang Kapag may problem si kidney, it would be retaining more and more and more and more water. But in earlier part of the kidney problems, kapatid, nagkakaroon tayo sa siya say, for example, in your renal failure, nagkakaroon tayo ng oliguric phase. So, ibig sabihin, ihi ng ihi si pasyente. So, basically, these are the major functions of our kidney. It removes toxins, kapatid. It maintains electrolyte balance. It produces these things, your bicarb, your erythropoietin, and also your vitamin D. And it also regulates water balance through the RAS system. Ayan. Okay? So, I know that you will be um, reminded. Okay, let's be all be reminded about the commonly no commonly asked. And these are your renal dis diseases. The set of your renal diseases, kapatid. First, we have your UTI. Okay, your urinary tract infection. Your glomerulonephritis. Your nephrotic syndrome. Your renal failure, you, which is which can be classified into two, which is both your acute and also your chronic uh, renal failure. Kapag acute po, kapatid, ang tawag natin dyan is acute kidney injury. At chronic form naman, kapatid, it's what we call as your chronic kidney disease. Ayan. Okay? So, we also have your uremic syndrome, which could also be a complication, kapatid, now of your... Um, renal failure. Okay, so isa-isahin natin. And for this session, we'll be discussing about your urinary tract infection. Okay, so kapag sinabi natin yung UTI, ito na yun kapatid. Urinary tract infection, wala nang iba. It's the urinary tract infection na i-discuss natin. So kapag sinabi natin kapatid na urinary tract infection, it is an infection in any part of the urinary system. Okay, which could be located in your kidney, which we call now pyelonephritis. Yan. Ureters, which we call as your mamaya also, we will be having this one no? um, in our uh, discussions. We also have your bladder, okay, which is the most common site of your urinary tract infection. And also, kapatid, meron din tayong UTI na located then in the urethra. Okay, in cases of males, kapatid, actually nagkakaroon tayo dito ng uh, other problems, such as say, for example, balanitis. Okay, why? Because the reproductive system and urinary system, kapatid, isa lang yung kanilang track. Okay, so example in, in cases of men, okay, nagkakaroon din tayo ng problema, such as say for example in balanitis, which is the inflammation of the penile shaft. shaft. Okay, so uh, kapag ganun po ang nangyari, hindi rin po maayos ang ating pong urinary tract. So may problema din tayo. Kapatid, let's remember that whenever it will be asked, whether kanino mas common, no? It is more common among female. And we know that it's because of the proximity, kapatid, of the enile orifice to the uh, orifice also or the urinary and both the reproductive and urinary system din ng mga kababaihan. Okay? So, it's more common among female. So, again, urinary tract infection is the infection of any of these parts. It could be the kidney, the ureters, the bladder, and also the urethra, kapatid. Tandaan natin yan. Okay, so what are those possible assessments na makikita natin na patient na nagkakaroon ng UTI? Alam nyo, it's a very, very, very common, I mean, common set of assessments na makikita natin dito. Okay, number one is dark-colored urine. Remember that according to Kuzier or Berman Snyder, the normal color of our urine is straw-colored. At kapag dinanong naman tayo, kapatid, what's the normal smell it's aromatic okay remember that one so first is my dark colored urine which is our topmost 
na assessment na makikita natin. Also, possible din ang hematuria kapatid or the presence of blood, okay, which can be assessed now in our urine analysis or urine analysis. Okay, pain in the pelvis, okay, of course, we can feel the pain because we know that pain kapatid is a cardinal sign of your inflammation or infection. Dysuria, yan, or painful in uh, doing urine, foul smelling urine, uh, it's because of the microorganism or bacterial invasion probably kapatid, and also your increased urinary frequency. So these are the most common kapatid na mga uh, assessments that we can find no, in our patients experiencing urinary tract infection. So now, what are those possible interventions? We have learned about your signs and symptoms. We have learned about your um, description of the disease. Yan. So what are interventions, kapatid? Uh, number one intervention na dapat natin gawin is we hydrate our patient. You hydrate our patient, kapatid, using water. Okay? And it's been long been debated in the US that cranberry juice okay, can be used but cups wala pong, wala pong uh, konkretong study okay, wala pang pag-aaral na ganun na nagsasuggest that cranberry juice is best used or therapeutic to our urinary tract infection. What we have is your acidic diet. So more than acid, citric food, yan, yung mga foods rich, uh, rich in vitamin C, your fruits, your oranges, just like that, kapatid. So, you increase the acid, more more fluid, and of course, kapatid, we also give antibiotics. And kasama din ni antibiotics, kapatid, ang pagbigay ng analgesics sa ating mga pasyente. So, now, let's discuss about the medications that's given to your patient experiencing urinary tract infection. So, we give this set of medications to our patients. First, nagbibigay po tayo ng urinary tract antiseptics. And later on, we will be learning about that. Okay, nagbibigay din po tayo ng fluoroquinolones. Kapatid, tandaan natin yan. And we also give sulfonamides. Okay, and also your urinary tract analgesics. So, ulitin ko po sa inyo, urinary tract antiseptics, urinary tract analgesics. We also have your fluoroquinolones and your sulfonamide. So, isa-isahin natin to kapatid, ha? Okay, first, let's discuss about your urinary tract antiseptics. Kapag sinabi natin urinary tract antiseptics, kapatid, from the word itself, antiseptic, okay? It serves as an antiseptic sa ating pong urinary tract. Kung baga, nililinis nito ang buong nating urinary tract, kapatid, no? Okay, kapag sinabi natin urinary tract antiseptics, we have number one, amoxicillin. Okay, you write that down. We also have cefexime, kapatid. You also have posfomycin. You also have methanamine and, of course, your nitrofurantoin. Okay? Uulitin ko po sa inyo, these are your urinary tract antiseptics. Kapatid, kapag tinanong ka, ano naman ang trabaho nila? Kapag sinabi natin urinary tract antiseptics, kapatid, they inhibit the growth of bacteria in the urine. And they cannot be used on infections outside the urinary tract. Bakit, kapatid? Uh, their functions oh, okay, or their um, their work no, is purely limited to the urinary tract kapatid. So again uh, let's remember that these are, this is the mode of action that's being done by our urinary, urinary tract antiseptics. It inhibits the growth of bacteria in the urine and we need to remember this one. Okay? So it is purely used in your uh, urinary tract infection. So, meron tayong mga pure considerations, kapatid, specifically on the drugs phosphomycin, methinamine, and also your nitrofurantoin. Kapatid, kapag sinabi nating uh, phosphomycin, uh, the consideration that you miss, we must be reminded about is that it is available in granules and it is mixed in at least 120 ml of water, okay, which can be a cold water. Okay? Also, kapatid, pagdating sa ating methinamine, it is given at bedtime to avoid gastric discomfort. And also, kapatid, it, it may cause no? crystalluria or the, crystal, the, the formation of crystals in the urine. And it should not be combined with sulfonamides, kapatid. Tandaan natin yan. Okay? So, phosphomycin, it's available in granules. Methinamine naman, kapatid, it can cause uh, creation or formation of your crystalluria. And it cannot be combined with sulfonamides. While your nitrofurantoin naman kapatid, 
it may cause GI and respiratory effects. Okay, so yung mga discomfort, you say for example, diarrhea, yan, okay, it may occur in your nitrofurantoin. So it may also cause um, reactions, okay, yung ating po mga hematologic reactions kagaya po ng agranulocytosis. So we, you, we must take note of this. So that's the first set of medications, kapatid, your urinary tract antiseptics. Kapag sinabi naman natin puro quinolones, kapatid, we are talking about your sasin, your floxacin group of medications, your ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, ofloxacin, and gatifloxacin. Ayan. So we need to remember about this one. So ano naman ang trabaho nito, kapatid? Your fluoroquinolone suppresses bacterial growth by inhibiting an enzyme necessary for DNA synthesis. So, it is active against a broad spectrum of microbes, such as, say, for example, dito po sa ating pong urinary tract infection. So, we also give your fluoroquinolones. Okay, what are those? Your fluxacin group of drugs. Okay, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, okay, ofloxacin, and also your gatifloxacin. Okay, so we just need to remember, kapatid, with fluoroquinolones, there is an increased risk of tendinitis and tendon rupture. So we must be very careful with moving our patients on activities of our patients because it may cause your tendinitis and tendon rupture. And we need also to remember that it must be administered in a full glass of water to avoid development of crystal urea. Okay? So, the same also with our previous set of medications, no? specifically with your methanamine, because it may cause uh, formation of crystalluria or urine crystals. Okay, so these are your fluoroquinolones. Another set of medications, kapatid, are your sulfonamides, which uh, comprises your sulfadiazine, sulfalizine, sulfacetamide, trimetroprim, sulfamethoxazole. Ayan. So, these are sulfonamides. So, ito naman kapatid, kung kanina sa ating pong fluoroquinolones, it suppresses or it inhibits the synthesis of D, uh, DNA synthesis, no kapatid. Dito naman kapatid, it suppresses bacterial growth by inhibiting synthesis of folic acid, which is ne necessary for the multiplication and also bacterial growth. Okay? Ayan. So, Remember that your sulfonamides need to be withheld if a rash if a rash is noted. So, eto naman po ang babantayin po natin. We must be very careful. Bantayin po natin if magkaroon ng rashes po si pasyente. And that's the time kapatid na kung saan we need to withhold the medication. Okay? So, ayan. Okay? Sulfonamides. Okay? Set of medication. Lastly, kapatid, meron tayong urinary tract analgesics which may be comprising of your pentosan, polysulfate sodium, and penazopyridine. Okay, ayan. So, these are your medications, kapatid, na ibinibigay naman that's specific for pain because your, um, your antibiotics or your antibacterial, just like your fluoroquinolones, your sulfonamides, and your antiseptics, kapatid, they cannot suppress pain. Okay? So, yun nga lang, because these are for pain, these are actually highly hepatotoxic and also actually nephrotoxic. So, so this should not be given for patients na meron pong uh, liver problems and then kidney problems. Okay? So, ayan. Thank you so much, kapatid. Magandang araw sa iyo. So, tune in lang po sa ating YouTube channel and start, start subscribing as we upload more and more videos. Maraming salamat po. this point this is cast about your glomerulonephritis and also another comparable condition in your urinary and renal problems which is your nephrotic syndrome ayan napakahalaga po no the very reason why pinagsabay po natin to because some of their concept kapatid is either related or indirectly proportional or indirectly related to each other so sila po yung magkabila ang concept no dito at most commonly, sila pa rin po yung tinatanong po sa ating pong board examination in our PNLE and even po sa ating pong NCLEX. Okay, so from the word itself, may nababasa na naman po tayong IT so ibig sabihin may inflammation po dito. Okay, so glomerulonephritis. Let's start. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin glomerulonephritis, this is an inflammation of the kidneys at the level of the nephrons. Okay, so sa nephrons po natin, 
which is the basic functional unit of our kidneys, kapatid, meron tayong bundles of blood vessels, okay? May mga bundles of blood vessels po tayo dyan, at ang tawag po natin doon ay glomerulus. Okay? So, ang tawag natin doon ay glomerulus. So, ang nangyayari dito, class, sa ating glomerulonephritis, okay, antibodies that's lodged in the glomerulus, okay, attacks the glomerulus itself. Okay? Such as, say, for example, uh, microbial invasion, mga microorganism, and most of the time, kapatid, oh, ang ating glomerulonephritis is caused by an infection. Okay? So, we need to remember that one. And the most common agent dito class na nag-cause nag is your gamma A beta hemolytic streptococcus or your GABS. Or kapag hindi man po lumabas sa inyong tanungan or yung sa inyong options po ang GABS, hanapin lamang po ninyo ang strep. Okay? Streptococcus infection. Okay, again, GABS or gamma A beta hemolytic streptococcus. Kapatid, saan po mas marami ang ating pong GABS? They are more, uh, kumbaga, ang kanila pong lugar sa ating pong katawan, they are more located in our throat, okay, in our oral cavity, down to our throat po. Diyan po sila normal uh, flora. Okay, now, if, if they are dis displaced, no, may mga times po na nade-displace sila sa siya, say, for example, sa ating pong heart, na kung saan po nagkakaroon tayo ng rheumatic heart fever. Upon the other hand naman kapatid, kapag nadidislodge naman sila sa ating pong kidney, to be specific kapatid, sa ating glomerulus ng ating kidney, ang nagiging problema naman natin is nagkakaroon tayo ng glomerulonephritis. Okay? Kapag tinanong kayo, what is the most common causative agents? It's GABS or gamma A beta hemolytic streptococcus. Okay, so ano nga ba ang mga assessments kapatid na present sa ating pong um, glomerulonephritis. Ayan, kapatid, kasi kasasabi lang natin, we have the sore throat sa ating patient. Sore throat, it's because, kapatid, we need to assess because most of those patients, kapatid, na has been diagnosed of glomerulonephritis, has a history or has an ongoing infection sa kanila pong sore. I mean, sa kanila pong throat. So, may, meron po silang sore throat. Okay? So, another is malay. Yan, yung Uh, too much body weakness nangingin ang katawan ni pasyente meron rin pong headache yan, ang headache po na hindi ordinaryo okay, also meron din pong flank pain ayan, kagaya po sa ating urinary tract infection may flank, may flank pain din po tayo also kapatid, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, meron tayong hypertension decreased din po ang urine output and also kapatid, again isa sa mga trabaho po ng ating kidney ang, ang pag-excrete Okay, ng ating pong body wastes. Say for example, your BUN and then your creatinine. Your BUN which is an end product of your protein metabolism out of all those things that you have just ingested. Upon the other hand, your creatinine which is an out product also of the protein metabolism that's made by your muscles. Okay, or muscle activities. So, dahil wala nang nag excrete kapatid, dahil sira ang nag excrete sa kanila, sira ang kidney natin, then ang mangyayari is tataas po ang levels nila sa katawan natin. Okay? So, now, we need to remember that the pathognomonic sign natin dito is T-colored urine in your glomerulonephritis. You need to take that down. Okay? T-colored urine. Okay. So, kapatid, kapag tinatanong naman tayo, what are your interventions. So, our interventions, number one, bibigay tayo ng antibiotics. Just review our previous discussion, kapatid, sa ating urinary tract infection. Okay? I-diniscuss po natin ang ating pong urinary tract antiseptics. Okay? Also, our sulfonamides and our fluoroquinolones. Okay? So, nagbibigay tayo ng antibiotics. Also, decrease fluid. Why? Because our kidney at this time is damaged. No? Just imagine, isa sa mga trabaho din po ng ating po kidney is the uh, fluid balance. No? So, dahil our kidneys cannot function well at this time, so you are retaining more and more water, kapatid, it's because na-activate po ang ating RAS system. So, our goal now is not to increase more fluid because it would help retaining more and more water. So, nagkakaroon po tayo ng edema dito. So, you decrease the fluid intake of the patient. Also, let the patient rest. Again, isa sa mga function po ng ating uh, kidney is the production of erythropoietin, which is kapag meron po tayong kidney problems, sa say, for example, in your glomerulonephritis, kapatid, ang nangyayari 
is that ang ano nangyayari sa patient natin, pwedeng magkaroon ng anemia. Hence, kailangan, kailangan po, or the patient is consuming more and more oxygen. So, we don't want our patient to have more and more activities. So, we want our patient to get rested to, to conserve oxygen. Okay? Also, monitor, of course, the blood pressure. It's because, again, okay, your kidney damage may cause you hypertension. It's simply because of the activation of your RAS system. Tandaan po natin yan. So, kapag dinatanong ka, kapatid, what's your diet? Okay, diet. Number one, you decrease the protein. Okay, why? Hala, sir, bakit dinidecrease natin ang protein? Tandaan natin na ang BUN at creatinine, kapatid, those are a uh, byproducts of protein metabolism in our body. So dahil hindi sila na ilalabas ang ating pong mga wastes, ibig sabihin naiipon lang sila sa katawan natin because it's the kidney that's responsible for their excretion. Ngayon, kapatid, dahil si Rasigid hindi sila na excrete naiipon sila sa ating pong katawan. To be specific sa ating pong circulatory system. So ngayon, dahil mataas na ang ating BUN at creatinine, we don't want to add more and more and more waste sa ating katawan. So nung ginagawa ng pasyente natin, I mean ang nurse natin, we decrease the protein intake ng pasyente po natin. Okay? Decrease din po ang sodium. Bakit kapatid? Because our patient is retaining more and more sodium at this time. I mean, the aldosterone is um, being released more. So water is retained. Okay, so we decrease the sodium here. And also, kapatid, we increase the carbohydrates because our patient needs more energy. Okay? So, you need to remember this intervention. So, kapatid, ganun lang siya. It's just very simple. If you know the functions of the kidneys, if you know how the kidney works, and once the kidney is disrupted, just like in our case in uh, glomerulonephritis, then you know each management. You will know anything in the disease process okay so enough for our glomerulonephritis now let's proceed to your nephrotic syndrome this is also quite easy okay for the word itself don't be confused nephrotic there is no much of inflammation here unlike in your glomerulonephritis or itis itis is there my inflammation but here nephrotic syndrome there's something wrong here but it's not more of the inflammation, okay? So, what's nephrotic syndrome, kapatid? Kapag sinabi natin nephrotic syndrome, it's a problem wherein the kidney, okay, there's a disorder in the kidney or there's a malfunctioning of the kidney that it's just um, excreting too much amount of protein, okay? So, our body here causes more and more and more excretion of urine. So, what are the causes? What are the possible causes of this? First is infection. Okay? NSAIDs. You need to remember, kapatid, that your um, NSAID is a highly um, nephrotoxic medication. It's also a hepatotoxic medication. So, we don't give NSAIDs to our uh, patients with liver and also kidney problems. Okay? Cancer, kapatid. So, you are excreting more and more protein. Lupus, okay, in SLE, diabetes, also um, GABS invasion or gamma A beta hemolytic streptococcus, and also in your inflammation. Remember, class, that our protein has this very important role in our body. Okay? So, these are the causes, and this is why nephrotic syndrome is actually affecting a lot of things in our body. It's because it is ex it is responsible or it's this disorder wherein our protein is being excreted in that too much amount, kapatid. So now, what are those assessments na makikita natin? Number one is anasarca. Anasarca, kapatid, this is generalized um, edema in the body. So you need to remember that your protein to be specific, albumin is responsible for the maintenance of oncotic pressure sa ating katawan. So, ibig sabihin, uh, responsible yan no? para sa normal na amount ng bodily fluids natin in each compartment, intravascular, extracellular, intracellular, in the spaces. So, 
it is being actually monitored and it is being uh, maintained by our protein. So now that our protein is being excreted more and more, what will happen to our body? So ang mangyayari sa katawan natin kapatid is that magkakaroon ng disruption of the homeostasis ng ating fluid. Okay, so magkakaroon ng third fluid shifting, magkakaroon ng edema. So much more kapag generalized na, that's what we call as your anasarca. Okay? Also protein. Why? Because it's responsible for uh, also clotting factors. Okay? Proteinuria, hypo, hypoalbumin, albuminemia, edema, hyperlipidemia, and high cholesterol. So, we need to remember these things, kapatid. So, these are our assessments. So, what do we do? First, we give our patient diuretics. Okay? And also, we give our patient ACE inhibitors. Why? This is to prevent, kapatid, the um, uh, hypertensive crisis. Okay? So, we are preventing here hypertension. We also give our anticoagulants. Why? Because the patient have these bleeding tendencies. By the way, kapatid, kapag sa ating pong ACE inhibitors like enalapril, captopril, and lucinopril, they are your angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors. So, they are preventing the conversion of our angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 conversion. So, the, there's an enzyme there which we call as your ACE or your angiotensin-converting enzyme. So, pinipigil nito, okay? Pinipigil ng ACE inhibitors ang conversion na ito, okay? However, there is this uh, most dreadful, I mean, uh, one of the adverse effects po ng ating pong ACE inhibitors is sa pagkakaroon ng dry cough. And when your patient experiences dry cough, you need to immediately stop it. Report it to the physician and also uh, stop the medication. Okay, so another also kapatid is magkakaroon ng anticoagulants and also what do you do with the diet? Kung kanina kapatid sa ating pong uh, glomerulonephritis, we need um, we need to decrease the protein intake of the patient. It's because we are having too much of the waste products of protein in the body. Mataas po ang B-unit creatinine natin. Pero dito sa nephrotic syndrome, the story is totally different. You are losing more and more and more and more protein. So you don't want to lose more protein. What we want is to increase the protein intake of the patient. It's because there's an abnormally occurrence of excreting more protein in the kidney. So anong gagawin natin? You give high protein diet to our patient. Okay? And also of course, low sodium pa rin tayo. Okay? So that is to prevent the... Uh, retention of more water causing your hypertension okay so low sodium tayo it's because our patient here is bloated already okay we also give diuretic because our patient is bloated here already okay so these are our interventions for our nephrotic syndrome maraming salamat kapatid for being with us in our discussion you know what glomerulonephritis and nephrotic syndrome they are one of the their 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 concepts that are sometimes interchangeably or minsan marami nalilito dito eh, no? nephrotic syndrome you're excreting more and more protein upon the other hand glomerulonephritis we don't want to have more and more protein it's because we're just having too much of the waste of protein in the body your BUN and your creatinine maraming salamat kapatid for being with us ingat po point this is cast about your acute kidney injury still we're under urinal and urinary problems yeah so from the word itself acute kidney injury alam na natin no, that there's a condition of the kidney there's a problem in the kidney here that's not chronic in nature so it's acute and the kidney is malfunctioning here and that's correct so kapag sinabi natin acute basically i know that it's already on our mind that acute is less than six months that's according to the fundamentals of nursing and that's correct actually but there's more to that as we go along discussing this condition okay kapag sinabi natin kapatid na acute kidney injury there is a rapid loss or abrupt loss of kidney function from renal cell damage so tama naman tayo doon okay so there's a rapid loss so sobrang mabilis uh, ang kidney 
uh, function loss natin dito because of uh, renal cell damage. So the problem is um, there is a problem with our kidneys and it can be caused by various causes as we go along mamaya. Didiscuss po natin yan isa-isa. Okay? So mabilisan siya. Again, the word there is rapid. Okay, it's abrupt in nature, kapatid. So, what are the causes ka pala of your acute kidney injury or AKI? So, may tatlo tayong main causes, your pre-renal causes, your intra-renal causes, and then your post-renal causes. So, alam na natin from the suffixes and prefixes that we have here. So, renal, when you say renal, kapatid, you talk about the kidney. At kapag sinabi natin pre, we're talking before, the kidney. Intrarenal, kapag sinabi natin intra, kapatid, it's within or inside of it. Okay, kapag sinabi naman natin post, alam natin yan, that's after. Okay? Okay? So, three causes, we have your pre-renal causes, intrarenal causes, and then your post-renal causes. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin pre-renal causes, okay? So, anything that happened before the kidney, so we must be familiar with the anatomy of our kidney no so anything that happens any condition that's uh, happening before the kidney okay tawag natin sa condition na yan which have co uh, precipitated our acute kidney injury yung tawag natin is pre-renal causes so ano nga bang mga example nun okay for examples we have here um, number one blood loss yan yung ating pong halimbawa no uh, nagkaroon ng Hacking wound si patient, nagkaroon ng injury, okay? Nagkaroon ng open wound si patient, no? there is excessive or too much blood loss, okay? So, nagkakaroon tayo dito ng decreased um, perfusion towards the kidney and ang reaction niya normally no, ni kidney is that uh, it will activate the renin, angiotensin, and aldosterone system or the RAS system. So, it would also lead to the damage that we have in the kidney. So, ang cause niyan, uh, that, that example is a pre-renal cause of your acute kidney injury. The same also with your dehydration, kapatid. Okay? So, there is the, the main cause or the main problem that we have there is that there is a decreased renal blood flow. So, yan po talaga ang nangyayari. Okay. Pangalawa, we have your intrarenal causes. So, Kapag sinabi din ng intrarenal, so the problem is inside the kidney. And that's it. Okay? So, along halimbawa nito, your tubular, tubular necrosis. Ayan. Okay? So, the tubular necrosis is an intrarenal cause of your acute kidney injury because the problem is occurring uh, inside the kidney. Your renal ischemia. Okay? And also your nephrotoxicity. Say, for example, uh, our patient have ingested or have consumed or have been administered all of those nephrotoxic medications okay and it has caused uh, damage to the kidney and that's what we call as your intrarenal cause okay and the last one kapatid is the post renal uh, cause of your acute kidney injury which obviously we know this everything that happens after the kidney what are those bladder neck obstruction cancer calculi Okay, it can be the inflammation that happened after our kidneys. So, ayan, if it can cause acute kidney injury, then the cause is post-renal cause of your acute kidney injury. Again, so when we say pre-renal, that's before the kidney. When we say intrarenal, that's inside the kidney or within the kidneys. And of course, last is post-renal after the kidneys. These are the three causes of your acute kidney injury. So, now that we know the causes, let's talk about the phases of your AKI or the phases of your acute kidney injury. So, what are those? We have some phases of your acute kidney injury. We have actually three. Three main, but there is one that's actually part of the phases. However, we do not include them because it's basically the onset of everything. It's the onset of of. of everything that we have in your acute kidney injury but it's included in the book however uh, there's nothing with it it's not really that significant however when when the question asks you kapag sinabi po na dyan nagsisimula ang lahat it's where everything starts everything is precipitated it's what we call as your onset phase okay so let's talk about your oligoric diuretic and then your recovery phase kapag sinabi nating oligoric phase kapatid from the world itself oliguric so the root word there is there's an oliguria 
So, kapag sinabi natin oliguria kapatid, that's basically decreased urine. Okay? That's basically urine, uh, decreased urination. Okay? So, decreased in, in your oligoric phase, there's a decreased urine output of less than 400 ml per day. So, that's just too much uh, that's that, that's just too low okay for our normal um urine output per day so what happens here it's because uh there is an acute kidney injury and then the kidney cannot perform its function so it's retaining more and more water so there's what we call as your fluid retention there's also fluid retention aside from that there is a decreased urine output so there is because there is decreased urine output So, your body is retaining more and more water. There is also uremia. Okay? So, remember that. And what happens is that there is metabolic acidosis. So, again, why there is metabolic acidosis? We know that one of the functions of the kidney, guys, is the creation or the production of your bicarb. So, because the, 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 the kidney is now damaged and there is no, uh, there is nothing producing our bicarb. So, what will happen? There would be acidosis. Okay? What type of acidosis? Metabolic acidosis. Okay? Also, remember, altered LOC will also happen. Might also happen. And also, coma is possible. And even death, mga kapatid. Pangalawang phase, we have your diuretic phase. From the word itself, if the first, I mean, the second phase is uh, retaining more water, there is no much of your urine, Here, in diuretic phase, it's actually adversely occurring. So, there is the increased urine output here of 4 to 5 liters per day. Just imagine, mga kapatid, kanina dito, you're retaining more water. Dito naman ngayon, you are actually excreting your fluids. So, what happens to you? You will be dehydrated. And there's also... A tendency of you because of compensation, kapatid, no? Our heart would co try to compensate, okay? Try to circulate the remaining fluid that we have in the body. So, makikita po natin magkakaroon ng tachycardia si patient. Okay? So, also, we have last phase which is recovery phase. So, ang recovery phase naman po, we need to remember that it's a slow process. Okay? We need to remember that it's a slow process and uh, complete recovery may take one to two years and it's here where in urine volume goes back to normal from the word itself it's something positive your patient is recovering and that's it okay wag mo nang pahihirapan ang sarili mo oligoric phase diuretic phase and recovery phase okay we know the phases of your acute kidney injury now so what are the assessments that that's uh that that can be seen in our patient okay so kapatid our assessments or signs and symptoms will also be based on the phases that we have in your acute kidney injury. Okay, so let's start with your onset. In onset, it begins with precipitating events. And that's it. Yun lang yung sinasabi ng libro. Wala nang iba about your onset phase. Okay, most of the events happens in your um, happens in your oligoric phase, in your diuretic phase. Okay, and some of those in your recovery phase. Okay. So, let's start with your oligoric phase. Kapatid, oliguria. Kasasabi lang natin kanina, there is a, a decreased urine output of even less than 400 ml per day. Here, what are our uh, assessments that are found in our patient? Increased BUN and that's it. Creatinine is increased. It's because our body is not excreting these nitrogenic substances. Okay? Or, the, or these nitrogenic wastes. So, Because our body is also responsible for the um, maintenance or the homeostasis of our electrolytes. So, it's, it's retaining more and more fluid. And aside from that, it's also retaining more and more electrolytes. So, what happens to you? Hyperkalemia. Hypernatremia. Yan. Hyperphosphatemia. So, that's what happened to our patient. Hypermagnesemia. Everything is up except for one electrolyte and that's calcium why because one of the function of your um kidney is the creation of synthetic vitamin d and vitamin d is responsible for the absorption of our calcium in the gi tract so dahil wala nang gumagawa nun kapatid so ang problema din natin is nagkakantaw ng hypocalcemia 
Okay, not to mention also na dito tumataas po si phosphate. Remember that your phosphate or phosphorus is inversely proportional with your calcium. Hypervolemia is also occurring. So increased BUN and CREA, hyper electrolytes, everything except for calcium, and then hypervolemia occurs. Okay, so here, diuretic phase kapatid uh, is the next phase. And then what are the assessments na makikita natin dito? There's a gradual decline of BUN and creatinine. Why? Because all of those uh, nitrogenic wastes is now... Uh, being excreted by our kidneys. So there's diuresis, or literally diuresis, literally increased urine output here. Hypovolemia may also occur, and also hypoelectrolytes. So lahat na, dahil inalabas na, diuretic phase na po tayo. So our patient here is actually very prone to uh, dehydration, so we must also take note of that. Last but not the least, kapatid, is your recovery phase. So, it's a recovery phase. It's where our patient starts to have an increased GFR and also or glomerular filtration rate and also have these starting to stabilize their blood urea and nitrogen and creatinine. Okay? So, these are your uh, assessments that can be found in every phases that we have. Ang pinakamahalaga dyan, classes, alam lang natin, oligoric phase, diuretic phase and then recovery phase and that's it everything will follow okay so now what are your interventions so first of course you monitor your vital signs to our patients marami pong interventions that can be um can be done to our patient but these are the most important and most notable no so monitor vital signs of course and also monitor intake and output and i have to take note of this ito yung lumalabas it should be hourly Okay, hourly monitoring of our uh, intake and output. And also, I have to take note this daily weight monitoring using same scale. And we need to take note that an increase of weight of 0 0.5 to 1 pounds per day indicates fluid retention. So, remember that one. Okay, remember that one, kapatid. Okay, monitor neurologic status. Why? Because uh, remember that... Uh, when our nitrogenic wastes goes up to your neuro system, and that's something dangerous. Okay, it might cause you harm, just like your asterixis, just like your coma. Okay, it may also kill your patient. Monitor also the lung sounds for crackles, and this is for your um, phase wherein you are retaining. For the oligoric phase, you are retaining more and more water. So we must be very careful in assessing our respiratory system because we might be uh, harming our patient baka lang din naman no? yung fluid ay maabot na sa ating lungs no? so re remember to always auscultate for lung sounds and take note for crackles okay now what's our diet low protein diet kapatid this is I have to highlight this one low protein why it's because specifically during the um, oligoric phase wherein you are retaining more and more and more and more nitrogenic wastes so we don't need to increase more nitrogenic wastes from your protein. So we make low protein diet. And also, kapatid, this one is very important. You prepare the patient for dialysis. This is if this one is prescribed to avoid your azotemia. Or this is now the accumulation of your nitrogenic wastes, which can be possible. No, uh, lumalabas po ang mga symptoms yan sa ating skin through our uremic frosts. So azotemia or pinaka dreadful jealous mag lead to coma okay so what we are also avoiding why we need dialysis is your metabolic acidosis and this is a life threatening condition okay so we need to remember these things maraming salamat kapatid thank you for being with me on our discussion with your acute kidney injury more and more as we go along tatawid po tayo sa ating chronic kidney disease or CKD at for today I would like to say thank you so much for being with me on my previous videos. Again, this is Junli Iskala, your nursing buddy, helping the nurses of the future. So for today, we'll be discussing about chronic kidney disease, which is still under your medical surgical nursing and adult health care. So ito po ay, this is the kalaban, no? This is in reverse naman sa ating pong previous discussion on your acute kidney injury because kapag acute kapatid kapag sinabi natin acute uh, basically when it comes to the duration of the disease when it comes to 
uh, how the onset happens or the the appearance of the manifestations happens so dito kapatid it's quite different no so kapag sinabi natin chronic kidney disease kapatid pag-usapan natin to so when we say chronic kidney disease this is the slow or irre- irreversible okay the slow you need to take note of the word slow ibig sabihin kapatid uh, sa ating pong acute kidney injury that's abrupt and that's really really very quick um, mabilis pong nagde-develop ang ating disease due to certain series no uh, we just discussed earlier yung ating pong uh, pre-renal intrarenal and then post-renal causes of your acute kidney injury so dito naman kapatid kapag sinabi natin chronic kidney disease this is slow in nature ito yung klarong pagkakaiba no compared to our acute kidney injury so progressive aside from that slow it could also be progressive and then you have, you need to take note of this word irreversible loss in kidney function of the renal cell okay so ibig sabihin because of a certain damage because of certain occurrence because of certain condition okay it could be secondary cause kapatid nagkaroon ng loss of kidney function ng ating renal cell so nagkaroon ng damage ang ating renal cell hence nagkaroon ng irreversible loss and that's what we call as your chronic which is very very slow in nature or progressive in nature so kapatid isa pang bagay na dapat nating maalala when we say chronic kidney disease this disease usually requires dialysis okay unlike sa ating pong acute kidney uh, disease or acute kidney infection or uh, injury uh, doesn't necessarily mean no, na kailangan natin ng dialysis but for your chronic kidney disease or CKD automatically because uh, dito there is a total loss or there there is a progressive and slowly progressive progressing loss of the kidney functions so just imagine no, yung apat po nating major functions of the kidney mawawala so what would happen to your kidney okay so usually requires dialysis to excrete sodium and water now what are the causes okay so may follow your acute kidney injury so alam natin yan so you have your pre-renal or yung lahat ng nangyari po before our kidney it can be a cause of your uh, CKD uh, intrarenal and as well as your post-renal but dito kapatid we need to remember that um, all of those causes na kasama po sa ating AKI can also be um, can also be a cause of your uh, chronic kidney disease because your AKI may progress to your uh, chronic kidney disease now another specific causes are your diabetes mellitus hypertension kapatid nahirapan no because of the too much pressure na meron po sa ating kidney so it can also be a cause diabetes mellitus is actually the same it's because what happens to our blood it's very very viscous just imagine you have a very viscous blood and because you have those small small um, blood vessels in your kidney nagkakaroon po ng damage dyan okay also with hypertension chronic urinary obstruction yon because of your calculi na matagal na po no uh, it could also lead to your um, chronic kidney disease recurrent infections yan so para po sa ating mga um, microorganism caused infections of the kidney renal artery occlusion also with your autoimmune disorders so we need to remember these things kapatid okay so now we have our stages of CKD according to the glomerular filtration rate okay because GFR is a specific um, indicator of your stages of CKD so depende po no that's why we need to take note of our glomerular filtration rate it's the amount of um, it's the amount of uh, fluid or substances that's being excreted by our glomerulus or being processed by our glomerulus which is the specific part now of our kidney so kapatid kapag more than 90 ml that's that puts our patient at risk no for uh, CKD so for our um, 60 to 89 uh, that's mild CKD uh, so 30 to 59 that's moderate C- CKD 15 to 29 that's severe CKD and now uh, for, for, for less than 15 ml so that's very very uh, problematic now class okay so 
Now, this is what we call as the staging of CKD na kung saan, kung mapapansin po natin, as the type of CKD progresses to a more severe type, so bumababa po ang glomerular filtration rate ng ating uh, kidney. So, anong ibig sabihin yan? So, the more that the CKD or the chronic kidney disease, uh, the more severe it is, so ibig sabihin, the more na hindi nakakatrabaho ang ating kidney. So, ganun lang po ang problema. Sa madaling sabi, pagdating po natin sa, sa ating chronic kidney disease, basically, nawalan ng function si kidney sa matagal na panahon. That, that's what happens here. Okay? So, these are the stages of your CKD. Okay? So, now what are the possible assessments na makikita natin sa ating pasyente na mayroong CKD? So, let's try to divide the concepts according to the body systems that we have. For your neuro, kapatid, nagkakaroon tayo dito ng asterexis, ataxia, Okay, or alteration in gait, myoclonus, or um, the mild, the more mild type of your seizures, lethargy, paresthesias, seizures, and also coma. So we need to remember these things. So all of these, kapatid, kung inyong mapapansin, ay may hyper and also meron din pong hypo. So asterixis, uh, ataxia, so basically those are abrupt and those are hyper type of your neuro assessments. Okay? So the just imagine no, ang ang pinaka ang pinaka landmark natin dito is your myoclonus and also your coma. Basically yan yung tinatanong palagi. Okay? So for your cardio cardiovascular assessments kapatid dito naman ang lalabas. We have your cardiac tamponade, we have your cardiomyopathy, heart failure, pericardial effusion pericardial friction rub, peripheral edema, uremic pericarditis. Kung inyo naman mapapansin kapatid, these cardiovascular assessments uh, contains or entails or includes your fluid. So sa cardiac tampo na danong nangyayari, basically na nalulunod po ang ating puso. It's because of the too much fluid. So dahil hindi na po nakaka-function na maigi si kidney, hindi niya na po nailalabas ang ating mga fluid, what will happen is you will retain more and more water, including your heart, or more and more fluid, including your heart, kapatid, malulunod din si puso. So, leading to your heart failure. Okay? So, kaya may pericardial effusion, pericardial friction rub, peripheral edema, it's because you are retaining more and more water. That's it, kapatid. Let's go to your respiratory assessments. So, kapag sinabi natin respiratory assessments, kapatid, still, this is related to your water or fluid retention. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng crackles dito, kapatid. It's because you are retaining more and more water. Okay? So, because you are retaining more and more water, uh, that's it, kapatid. Um, may kakaroon tayo ng uh, abnormal breathing sounds, such as your crackles. Deep sighing, yawning, depressed gog reflex, cosmos respiration, shortness of breath, takip niya, Plural effusion, still, because of your water. Uh, pulmonary edema, yan. So, that's what happens, kapatid, in your respiratory system kapag meron naman tayong chronic kidney disease. Now, let's go to your gastrointestinal assessments. Nagkakaroon ng anorexia, nausea and vomiting, changes in taste equity, constipation, diarrhea, and ito, this is very, very landmark. Nagkakaroon po tayo ng metallic taste, or we call that, we call that as the uh, dis this jusha okay so we call that this jusha nagkakaroon din kapatid tayo ng stomatitis uremic colitis gastritis and then urem uremic fetor so anong ibig sabihin noon ang ating pong uh, amoy ng ating pong uh, stool and, and then ang ating din pong pagutot ay there's something na kakaiba kakaiba dito so we call that as a ure uremic fetor Okay? So, another is urinary assessments. What are your urinary assessments here? When when it comes to your urine, your urine becomes diluted here. Okay? Straw-colored urine or it becomes lighter urine. Hematuria is possible also. Polyuria. Uh, nocturia uh, on early stages. That's why we call it the uremic. Okay? The, the diuretic uh, phase. Yeah, that's it. And then oliguria or anuria on the later part. Okay? So, dito may also have your proteinuria, okay? Which is now uh, very, very uh, common, okay? In your chronic kidney disease. So, let's proceed to your integumentary because this has always been asked, no? In the board exam as well as your NCLEX. 
So, poor skin turger, kapatid. Bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng poor skin turger? Yes, there is... Um, at, at, at earlier stage, kapatid, nagkakaroon tayo ng polyuria or nocturia. So, nadidehydrate po tayo. Hence, nagkakaroon tayo ng poor skin turger. Dry skin, also. And then, nagkakaroon tayo ng bruises or what we call as your ecchymosis. Pruritus, which is possible, kapatid. Purpura, soft tissue calcifications. And also your uremic frost. Ang uremic frost po na ito kapatid, this is already because of the accumulation of your wastes. No? Basically, ang uremic frost na ito, it's like those um, snowflakes na very maliliit po siya na makikita po natin dito po sa, uh, usually, nakikita siya sa face, sa, sa facial part and also in your head. So it's like dandruff that's in the face. Parang ganun po. Uh, that's what we call as your uremic frost. Okay, it's because of the accumulation of the bodily wastes, such as your creatinine, the accumulation also of your um, blood urea, nitrogen, that's it. Okay, so that's what we call as your uremic frost. Next is your musculoskeletal uh, assessments, which includes bone, bone pain, uh, muscle weakness, muscle cramping. It's because of your electrolyte imbalances, pathological fracture, Dahil isa sa mga functions po, again, ng ating pong um, kidney is the production of vitamin D, which is essential also for the absorption of your calcium in your digestive tract. So, reproductive system naman, what are your assessments there? Decreased fertility, decreased libido, Im impotence, infrequent or absence of menses. So, basically, these are our assessments na makikita po natin in our um, chronic kidney disease. So, what are your interventions, kapatid? Basically, you give everything that's given in your acute kidney injury. You treat your patient according to the manifestation that's at hand. And the most important management is to monitor the patient. Yan, monitor the patient uh, in telemetry or in your ECG for hyperkalemia management. Ayan, kapag makita na po natin yung hyper-T, that's also already indicating your uh, hyperkalemia of your patient. Prepare for dialysis. Yan, prepare for dialysis. Manage your patient's fluid and electrolyte imbalances. And also in managing pruritus. So you need to remember that we must avoid soaps. So what we must give is we must give antipruritus to our patient or antipruritic ointment, antipruritic agent, or basically antihistamine. So we give our patients uh, those agents. Okay? So... Thank you, Caps. Maraming salamat for being with me in our discussion of your chronic kidney disease. More and more videos are coming still under your renal and urinary problems. Maraming salamat po. For today, let's discuss about your uremic syndrome, a problem that's still under your urinary and the renal problems. So, what's uremic syndrome, by the way? So, kapatid, kapag sinabi natin uremic syndrome, it's a systemic, clinical, and laboratory manifestations of severe and or end stage kidney disease so we just actually discussed about your um acute kidney injury and then your chronic kidney disease or you uh, ckd so your uremic syndrome is actually an outcome or it's an it's the end uh, condition of your chronic kidney disease that's why in your end stage kidney disease uremic syndrome may happen okay so what is uremic syndrome in the first place so it happens because of accumulation of nitrogenous wastes which includes your blood urea nitrogen from the word itself creatinine your uric acid so all of those things guys are your nitrogenous waste products in the blood no so now if this happens it's because one of the functions of the, our kidney is to excrete po ang mga bagay na to. Okay? So now, dahil hindi na po na-perform ng ating pong uh, kidney, ang mga uh, functions na ito, it's because sira na po si kidney, uremic syndrome happens. Okay? So ganun lang po siya kasimple. Okay? Again, this is due to accumulation of nitrogenous waste products in the blood caused by the kidney's inability to filter out these waste products. So tandaan po natin yan. So, kapag hindi na nalalabas ni kidney yung ating waste products, okay, the waste will increase and will accumulate in our bloodstream. Hence, nagkakaroon tayo ng uremic syndrome. Okay? So, now, let's discuss what are those manifestations na makikita natin in your uremic syndrome. First, we have your oliguria. Okay? So, you know, 
um, this is in the earlier part, no? So, nagkakaroon tayo ng oliguria, so mababa po ang amount ng ating po urine, presence of protein, red blood cells, and casts in the urine. So, tandaan po natin yan, okay? Tumataas po ang protein, red blood cells, and casts in the urine. So, bakit tumataas ang protein again? Because, kapatid, your, um, your nitrogenous waste are in a form of protein as well, no, kapatid? So, ang ating pong red blood cells, kung bakit, it's because probably of dehydration po ng isang tao, hence, nagkakaroon tayo ng positive or presence of RBCs, no, in the blood. Okay? So, also casts in the urine. Another is the elevated level of urea, uric acid, potassium, and magnesium in the urine. And this is actually because nga, no, the uh, kidneys failing to excrete all of these things. And when the time comes na kung saan nagkakaroon na tayo ng diuretic phase, now dumadami po, no, elevated sila, sobra sila sa amount. Okay? Ang ano yung mga sobra sa amount na yan? These are your urea, your uric acid, your potassium, and then your magnesium. So, we need to remember that well. Hypotension or hypertension, kapatid, depende pa rin again. So, what stage of um, kidney disease are we? Okay? Alterations in the level of consciousness, you need to remember because your, um, your, your urea, your uric acid, because they are acid, okay, they can irritate our brain. So, they can irritate the central nervous system. Hence, it may alter the level of consciousness, Okay? So, may alterations po sa consciousness po ng ating pasyente. Okay? Electrolyte imbalances. Okay? Stomatitis. Ayan. Nausea and vomiting. Again, it's because it affects now our nervous system and also diarrhea or constipation. So, if you will uh, observe, if you can observe here, our signs and symptoms are actually extremes. Okay? At the, at the both ends. So, may oliguria tayo dito. However, tataas naman yung ating levels na ng mga wastes. It's, be it's because... It depends on what um, phase we are now, okay? So, you need to remember these things. Okay, so what are your interventions? You monitor vital signs for hypertension, tachycardia, and irregular heart rate. Monitor electrolyte balance. Monitor intake and output. Uh, provide the limited but high-quality protein diet as prescribed. Provide limited sodium. So, why I highlighted these things? It's because, kapatid, um, malaki pong pagkakaiba ng restrict at saka limited. Okay? So, we do not restrict this um, uh, food, no? high in protein, but we give them a limited. Okay? Limited approach po ang diet natin dito, but high quality protein. Limited sodium, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphate diet. It's because we don't want to increase these things. It's because mataas po sila sa pasyente natin. Assist the client to cope with body image disturbances caused by uremic syndrome. Because in uremic syndrome, kapatid, um, I need to repeat this one. Nagkakaroon po tayo ng uremic frost. Okay, it's like a dandruff po. Just imagine no, yung mukha natin nagkaroon ng dandruff or nagkaroon ng mga flakes. So, just imagine uh, that one. So, we need to uh, assist our client to cope up with body image disturbances caused by these things. Okay, so that ends for our... Uh, uremic syndrome that's very very short hence uh, maraming salamat kapatid for being with us so patapos na po tayo ng urinary and renal problems so bear with me uh, so we end this thing so may mga paunti-unti na lang po tayong concepts na pag-uusapan maraming salamat po